It's May 13th. It's Monday in the beautiful city of Coeur d'Alene, and this is the Public Works Committee. These are my guys, Dan and Kiki. We welcome you. And right off the top, an exciting thing from the Water Department, Terry Pickle. Take us there. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for letting me come before you this afternoon. First thing I want to say is, I can get it here. Howdy from Coeur d'Alene. I couldn't resist that picture. Good old days, huh? Good old days, yep. Parking meters. <laughs> Our department was probably down in that area sometime during that time, too. So, Today, I am bringing before you a uh, proposed contract for construction of a new water administration and maintenance building uh, up on the uh, Howard Avenue site. Uh, I want to kind of go over a little bit of the history of where the water department's been at. Um, originally, it was Idaho Water, and this was the... Uh, original water master's uh, house down on the uh, lower side of Tubbs Hill. The big white building there was the uh, actual water plant at that time where the pumps and stuff were stored for the lake water intake. Um, we've always been an innovative department uh, as shown here from the drive-through bill pay uh, back in the 19, early 1980s. So I thought that was pretty neat, or 1970s rather, excuse me. Uh, we were stationed at the old city hall for a period of time in the basement. Uh, I housed the maintenance and operations and then the offices were uh, partially housed in city hall and they were moved down to uh, Harbor Center for a while. Uh, that would have been a great view there, wouldn't it? So I'm sure Jim loved that when he was down there. Um, then we were moved from there when that was transferred to NIC and uh, Lewis and Clark State College to a shop that is now Lake City Rental. Uh, the, house, the water department was housed there for a few years. We ran into some issues with the landfill and methane. Uh, so we had to look at moving from there before uh, somebody got injured. Uh, since then, they've taken care of the methane problems with uh, underbed drains and vents. So that's no longer an issue, but um, we were long gone from there. About in 1990, I believe they built the street and uh, water shop uh, on the Ramsey camp complex, uh, so we were moved in. We paid for a third of that uh, large building there, that's 3,800, and uh, so our offices and stuff were crammed in some corners there uh, to make room. Um, the site has since, whoops, let me go back. Oh, that's right. The site has since uh, gained uh, a lot of other uh, folks with us. Uh, this is a view of the maintenance shop there. Um, this is the office that was installed in 2004. Uh, we've since outgrown it, uh, and we've been crowded with other uh, facilities around us. Here's the new police and fire buildings. Um, those were our gravel piles and street departments. Gravel piles were for a long period of time, um, so we've had to move those off-site. Um, here's the fire station training area, and uh, the bulk water station, and the bulk um, road de-icer and to the south we filled it up with buildings so the place is pretty full limited for space and everybody's needing to expand so we're proposing to move up to the Howard site which is just east of the compost facility uh, this was an original site plan that we had laid out uh, this would grant more parking uh, more user space for the water department um, and we consolidate everything into one large building. Uh, this is the site as it pretty much sits today. We've already installed the 8-inch water line loop through there. Um, we've leveled the site, uh, dug down the unsuitable, took the unsuitable material out where the building pad would be, brought in about three feet of fill, compacted it, had it tested so it's ready for a foundation. Uh, we've also done frontage improvements for so the street trees, the sidewalk, uh, the access gates and everything are already there, ready to go. Um, we'll have uh, open public access to the front of the building with everything else be gated. So all of the construction will take place behind the building rather than around the building. Uh, it'll make easier access for our customers to actually find us instead of having to look behind two other buildings between streets and fire. Uh, so they'll have great access for us. Uh, it'll also increase public safety because they will not be moving in around equipment that flies around that lot all the time. I mean, the guys are pretty safe, but there's equipment moving all the time. There's vehicles, fire department, street, water. Uh, there's a lot of congestion around the Ramsey complex. So. 
this is our basic floor plan. Uh, we've tried to keep it as plain and simple and functional as possible. Uh, we worked with uh, H2A architects and they've been absolutely fabulous to work with. They've listened to us, uh, looked at our needs, looked at what we should have, what, we, uh, what they thought we should have, and have pared the sizing down as much as we can. Uh, we had originally looked at a second floor over the offices for a future expansion. Uh, due to ADA requirements, that was an extra $200,000 that we decided was not going to be beneficial, so we cut that portion out. It would have taken up too much office space. We'd had to have an exterior fire access. Just wasn't practical. So we've cut it back to bare bones. Um, it's a plain Jane steel building. Um, we feel it'll be suitable, uh, expandable in the future if we do need to, and uh, uh, will work very well for everything that we need to do long into the future. We looked at clear span steel construction as the most suitable method. Um, it offers a lot of flexibility. Um, with clear span, we don't have posts in the middle of the building we have to deal with for construction equipment or moving around in there or long materials. Our pipe is 20 feet in length, so moving around posts in the middle makes it difficult. So we've looked at the clear span. We also looked at the pole building. We're looking at a 100 by 250 foot building. A 100 foot span for a pole building is the limit. And that's stretching it even a little bit at that. So we have asked our architects to look at the most functional method of building and clear span steel was the best uh, solution and the least expensive. Our old building was tilt-up concrete panels. They're not easily expanded. They're expensive in this day and age and just not functional for what we need to do. So we've looked at all the different uh, construction methods, felt this was the best way to get uh, to what we needed to have and still be expandable in the future. Uh, so we went out to bid for the building after it was designed by H2A. Um, Teela Riviere was the lowest bid at $2,660,000. Um, the next one up was General Construction at $2,670,000. Uh, I did not run the percentages, but it's very close. I mean, these bids were all right in there. Um, when we did the pre-bid meeting, we had about eight generals that were there, so five of those eight did at least bid. So we thought that was pretty good. Um, the one issue we've run into is that 210000 over what we had budgeted. When we looked at this over a year ago in the budget process, back at that time we were quoted about 2.2 to 2.4 million. So we budgeted 2.45, felt we had a little bit of room there. Uh, when the engineer came back with the, or the architect came back with the latest quotes, he figured around 2.5, so we were, it's a little bit over that. Um, so that's an issue with uh, the bid. We still feel it's doable. Um, we do have sufficient cash to pay for it, uh, even though we didn't uh, <coughs> budget the line item high enough. Um, we, excuse me, so we have uh, about 3.2 million in cash in hand to be able to fund this. Um, we did not include this in the rate study. So none of this would be funded by any of the rate study increases. So this is all cash in hand. Um, I am not, while well, I'm expecting to bust the actual line item in the budget, I'm not expect, expecting to bust the, the budget itself because we're going to realize savings from a couple of other projects that are going to be pared back a little bit, uh, not due to this, but due to uh, problems with acquiring easement for a transmission main up Hutter. Uh, we've run into some problems there, so we're having to push that off a year and work on that. Uh, we'd also budget some of that money for a transmission main over on um, Boyd for Fernand Hill, and uh, that's, that's going forward, but we'll see some savings on that one. Um, I'm also going to be saving about 100000 on the drilling of the new well up on Hutter because we were able to reutilize some of the engineering from Welch Comer on the Ralph Kapal well, so that saved about 100000 on that engineering bill that I had estimated for the year. So we will not need to do a uh, budget amendment to fund this. Also, this contract will be over 300 days, calendar days. So it will transcend this budget, this fiscal year budget. So I'm budgeting or carrying over some money into next year. Uh, I expect we would spend probably about two to 2.2 million in this fiscal year budget and the rest would be expended out of the next budget. So um, I have given you a list in your packet of what I see as benefits. 
um, for the customers as well as for the employees themselves. Um, as I pointed out, the biggest one for me is no additional cost to the ratepayer. Um, it gives us better improved ADA access. It frees up some space that's absolutely needed by uh, streets, police, and fire on the Ramsey complex. It makes it safer for our customers to access us, gives us more customer parking, and uh, gives us a more centralized location to be able to uh, egress. Right now, we're seeing anywhere from 20 to 60 ingress, egress trips out of the Ramsey complex just for water alone. That doesn't include police, fire, and streets. So that would save that much traffic on Ramsey. Um, we're seeing some issues there with it as it is. So um, I will not go through the entire list. You have it before you, so you can read that at your, at your leisure. I'm sure you probably already have. Um, with that, I'll take any questions you have. So. Thank you. Go. You answered, you can see me crossing them off. You did a great job of answering my questions as we went, so that was great. Um, a couple of quick things in your ad alternates. Uh, they were all really close in, in the base bid as well, so you're hoping to have additional funds available as you go along to add these things. Um, question I had about this building, will you be needing to do an increase in budget request for um, expenses and operations over the current facility that you're in now? Uh, we will probably see a little bit in energy because it's a larger size building, but we're also looking at more efficient ways to heat it and light it. So we're going to gas uh, fired uh, furnaces and we're also going to LED lighting. So we should see some savings energy wise in those. We're trying to get the, the most energy efficient uh, package built. Okay, so that was addressed, so that's great. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think that was literally I had five questions and you, and you covered them, so I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, just say, yeah, you did a good job. Uh, obviously, did your homework. We, um, you know, we've been talking about this for a while, and unfortunately, in just the short time of the last year or two, we've gone from, gee, we, we're going to get more done for our money to, you know, everything is costing more. In fact, I think we have another item on here that's uh, overrun, so I think it looks good to me in times of the essence to get it going. I, um, do you have any specific idea of who would take that over or not within the city? The, uh, the existing building? Yeah. P uh, police has spoken or at least put in their interest for the uh, uh, office building. Um, they're looking at, I believe they're looking at training purposes for it. I see, think that's kind of a waste. I would like to see the office space utilized and I would like to see streets and engineering take it over because we're technically their ADA access and they are sadly in, or badly in need of office space with engineering services up there and stuff. Um, they're dealing more and more with customers so I'd really, I'd like to see that dedicated to them but I mean, it's going to general fund, so. Well, living in that area and going up and down Ramsey all the time and, and the other street, I think it's gonna be a great location and anything we can do to kind of relieve some of the traffic burden on Ramsey is yep. good. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, it looks good to me. I have just a few. <clears throat> so no rate increase. The rate increase does not include this. No, this did not, this was not included in the rate increase. So. You know, the water department, sewer guys, you guys have to have a couple million bucks laying around most of the time just because when something bad happens, everything's a million bucks. Right. Is this going to take away from that? I mean, if something bad was to happen and you've kind of spent your bottom line, it, how does that build back up over time? That's factored in. That portion, the, the, what they call an emergency reserve, is factored mm -hmm. into the rate study. So there will, still be, there will still be money left over from this portion of it because we don't expect to spend $3.2 million on it. We, okay. expand, we look to expand 2.6. I loved, I loved your history. I was thinking about, since I've known you guys, uh, you've never had indoor parking for any of your equipment, trucks. No. It's all been outside the garages yep. and stuff. Yep. So this is going to kind of be a little cleaner and nicer. And, and I... I have in our new budget packet, we are looking at replacement for vehicles and as part of the budgeting process. And so I have looked at extending those lives out a little bit to 
because we'll be able to uh, keep them a little nicer for a longer period of time. So this kind of factors into that, yes. The land, all the work you've done now, all this prep you showed us, the sidewalks, the, the right-of-ways, the ingresses, egresses, is that already paid for? Yes. So you've been kind of yes. chumming it. That's all I got. You you always do your homework, Terry. <laughs> and the history helps. You know, you guys have come a long way. It seems like a whole lot of money. Yeah. It is. And uh, um, we do believe it is needed uh, to give us a permanent home where we can do our operations long into the future. So this should be one more thing. the site. When you mentioned that was one of my other things was how how far is long into the future and do you have enough land there to expand has that been yeah. thought with the building design at 4.5 acres fenced in there um, we expect to eventually expand an extra 60 feet on the building uh, that should accommodate everything we should need within the next 30 to 40 years looks like a good permanent home yeah. so i'll look for a motion Okay then, I would be making a motion that council accept the bid and authorize the mayor to enter into a construction contract with Taylor Riviere Construction for 2.66 mil to build the new water department administration and maintenance building. Second. Been moved and seconded. So do you guys think this, we should make him do this again for the whole council? Probably be a good idea. Well, it's a large amount. So it's a lot of money. <clears throat> You're good with that? Sure. Well, I think it's important that everybody yep. sees this. You'll get a little more face time, and right. maybe they'll come up with more interesting questions. Mm -hmm. And I fully expect that, because this is a large amount of money, and yeah. I think it should be debated in front of council. Okay. It's good for the more public. More than happy to do that. Okay. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank so you. So we'll see you on the agenda. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good job, Terry. Well, that was fun, $2.6 million. <laughs> okay. Next, Timmy, our street guy's coming up to uh, talk about funding agreement with Chip Seal with our, our neighbors, Hayden and Dalton. Welcome, Tim. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Public Works. I am here today to talk about a funding agreement that is in front of you today. This is the first part of the process in which we are working with our communities, City of Hayden and City of Dalton Gardens, to put together an agreement so we can go out to bid. This year, our chip seal program will be a little over 8.57 miles of road. Um, we also are incorporating a couple in-house overlays in, in our process of our um, maintenance of our streets. So this cooperative agreement is laid out to where we will all go into bid. Welch Comer is going to be the consultant on this process. This is the third year in which we've done this and in the agreement it states out who's responsible for what uh, our, our duties would be to review the documents um, we would advertise for the bids and we would open the bids here and then get with our two partners the the promise behind doing this partnership is to is the competitive pricing in which we may receive for the products themselves you know the more quantity we have we feel we get a better price for it uh, as you can see we're going to do Celtis and Hanley and 15th Street or our arterials that we're doing this year and then we've got a couple small sections in some ro residential areas that we're going to complete. And again, this is just the first part, this funding agreement that um, brought to you forward. And then as the bids come in, we'll come back to you with the bid process and go forward with that. With that, I...
take any questions. Yeek. Thanks, Tim. Um, so this is the third year that this has been a cooperative agreement program. Have there been issues that have come up in the last couple years that you resolved through this one, or? N not not with, within the partnership. I mean, our challenges, like last year, Ironwood is the traffic control. We are going to manage all that internally. In years past, we've asked for that section to be done also by our consultant, but... You know, quite honestly, we're taking all the questions and we would rather manage that. Uh, we are going to have a project manager on site, inter an internal one, to make sure that the chips are going at the flow rate they're supposed to and the oil's going to be laid down and pre-sweeping and things like that. But that's the difference this year. Okay. And so then... is. Following up on that, is then Welch Comer doing inspections and approvals and all of that for all three municipalities at the same time? Welch Comer is not going to do the approvals for the city of Coeur d'Alene. They will be for Hayden and Dalton. We are going to have our own project manager on site to manage that. There is some consultant fee process in which uh, if we feel that we're not getting the product that we asked for in the design phase, and then the Welch Comer will be on site to manage that for us. But other than that, no, it's all going to be taken care of in-house. Okay. Uh, go ahead. I think I have one. Well, I, <clears throat> again, this is third year, so... Um, Looks like you've got it down to a science and just kind of keeps getting a little better each year, so sounds good. Yeah, our, you know, our challenge is, I was talking to Council Member Miller earlier, you know, we're, we just pulled some traffic counts on Ramsey Road, and I mean, we're getting 15, 17,000 cars a day on Ramsey Road. I mean, that's US 95. And Government Way is running around 12,000 cars. So our, our, our main arterials should be our focus and, you know, put our, our street maintenance out into these residential areas to keep them going. I mean, we have 550 lane miles of roads out there. And I have a couple. Um, I love the idea of having a project manager from our side. I think that's a huge, huge improvement. And unfortunately, we learned the hard way, I guess. On the prep, I learned a lot about talking to you about how important a prep is for chip seal. Can you elaborate on that just a little? It's not only the chip seal chairman, but it's also, you know, with an overlay. It's, it's the knowledge of it. The challenge that we have is getting ahead of ourselves, you know, because a lot of this crack seal and and uh, the structural where we do cutouts and inlays and things like that, we should be a year or two ahead of ourselves. So, you know, that's been the challenge internally is to get far enough ahead that you're you're not always playing catch up, and and this this year. That will help us do that, you know, because we, we've been tackling government way. You know, there was challenges to government way. And looking back, uh, I probably wouldn't have chipped it at that time. Last year, we learned a few more things, you know, doing that double chip on ironwood. And, and it's handled it really well. And you don't see those hairline cracks and things like that in there. And, you know, we're going to... This year, you'll notice that we're, we're going to do a 3 eighths chip in the residentials instead of a quarter-inch chip. You really can't see the difference by the time you fog it to where I, I believe you're just going to get a better life out of it. And the quarter-inch chip costs more to, to produce than the 3 eighths chip does. I have to ask about manholes and water. 
nobody's going to be messing with your chip seal after the fact, cutting holes, putting manhole covers in. There, there's always that, you know, it's, we're going to have those. I mean, you have emergency cuts and we do have that five year cut for our overlays, but you know, the, the chip seal, I, I think that if you get too far ahead, you know, even on ourselves, but also our utilities, water and wastewater, you know, we work with them to put out a plan is not to try to get, let them get their work done ahead of us. Right. Traffic control, we're saving some money there and doing it the way you want to do it. That is probably the largest expense in a chip seal or an overlay and and we're not going to save money but we're going to expect to get what we pay for that's one that you know geez we get lots of calls on that and that's why we want to have an in-house project manager to maintain that my last question is um so we're not doing this ourselves no you're not letting go of that keep exploring that i i would love to bring it back and talk about it i think it was a little misunderstood you know I, i'm not trying to take over you know that the outside world's company but it just gives us another tool you know there's little spots here and there that it, it just makes sense you know that to do it in-house, but I'm, I'm not bringing it to the budget table this year. Okay, thanks. Any questions? That's good. Speak? No, I'm good. Okay. All right, I look for a motion then. And I would make a motion that the council approve cooperative funding agreement between the city of Hayden, city of Dalton Gardens, and the city of Coeur d'Alene for the 2019 chip seal project. Second. Any other comments? Been moved and seconded, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And consent, you okay with that? We'll get you another time, Jim. <laughs> Thank you. All right, moving on. Bill, come on down. Bill Greenwood, talking about the grandstand remodel, looking for a contract manager. I think today? Amy gave us this already. Yeah, good. I think yeah, so. Yeah. Is that, that the second one? Just making sure right? we have the yes. same one. Okay, perfect. Bill's mumbling up here, by the way, if you can't hear him. <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure we have the right, the right current one. set of information. So, you recall a while back you rejected some bids for the grandstands. And you gave us authority to go out and talk to some construction managers. Uh, and we did that. So we lined up three people, three different firms. They were very, very close, and we ended up having a face-to-face -face with all three. Um, Geno was one, uh, Lerrera was another, and the other was Walker Construction. Walker rose to the top of the heap on that, and so we began uh, working with them. Last time I brought this before you, you all were very interested in numbers. So I, was gonna, I didn't want to come back to you until I had numbers. And I was being questioned a whole bunch about these costs. And so we didn't really able to get that by just having a construction manager. I want to have a construction manager with numbers to bring to you today. So um, as you see, we're over budget. Derek Walker, with, or, I'm sorry, Derek Allen with Walker Construction worked really hard. And we've actually went back to the well a couple of different times. Uh, we opened up some subcontractors sub um, bids and we had I think 10 or 11 elements that weren't even bid on and we were even over budget at that time. So there were certain pieces of the puzzle that people weren't interested because they were too busy. So he went back, beat the bushes some more and got some numbers for us. And so we got all those blanks filled in and after we got that, I sat down with the design team which was uh, John Mueller, Steve Roth, Howard Gould was sitting on that as well as Troy to try and cut more out of this. And at the end of the day, what we found we could only really cut is another ad alternate, which was um, gutters and downspouts that included double barrel dry wells. So that was kind of expensive. It was about $50,000. So we took that out. Even with that, we're still over budget. 
So the question for you today is, are we interested in moving forward with this and using parks capital to make up the difference? There it is. <laughs> there it is. That's the question. Kiki, go at it, would you? I, boy, I've been up to bat first all day. Um, this is a toughie because we understand construction costs are going up. And it's my understanding that July 1, we have some sideboards that are coming on to the ability to utilize some of the Ignite funding. That's correct. So, so some legislation passed that limits our ability to utilize that. Right. So I feel like we're in a little bit of a hot box yep. to say, you know, do we, right. you know, do we, do we try to steal second here and um, get this thing done? Or, or, or do we need to play it safe and just take the base hit? Do you, like, do you like what I'm doing here with the... Yeah, that, that's the sleepless nights I've been having the entire yeah. weekend, trying to sort through that myself. So my, my feeling is this, is that um, that's it's just too far over budget, is my initial thought. It's just too far over budget. I um, If we cannot build what is on our mind's eye design-wise because of this increased cost in construction, then we either need to come back to council with a proposal that is within the budget or with some different, I don't know that you've probably already beat the bushes for every creative funding source that there might be, but maybe that and or even a different timeline for when this gets done. Yes. So I just feel like that's, um, it's just a little too far over, too far over budget for that project. So I'm wondering if we can see um, something come back with some alternatives to what we do with the grandstand. Um, as much as we love it, maybe it's not going to turn into the grandiose thing that we want to have immediately, um, or the, the grand grandstand. Right. So um, that, that's kind of my initial thoughts on that, but I'm, I'm really willing to listen to more discussion about it. Dan. Um, <clears throat> well, a couple of things. I, We've got to do something with, with the grandstand, and um, um, and also this is, I mean, this is too big for this committee on a Monday afternoon to make a quick decision. So it it needs to go to the full council, um, and um, and really give some thought. A actually, just hearing about the potential, you know, sideboards and the July first and. Um, I guess what I would be wary of is doing something too quick, too cheap, that it, we're going to end up being disappointed down the road. Maybe this is a time where, okay, if we, maybe we do need to go to the public and, uh, and then they, and then we can really put, you know, okay, this is the vision of what we would like. Maybe even, you know, a couple of options or something. Um, I realize the clock is ticking on some other things, but um, I know. I, I guess I just feel like there's too many unknowns and uh, and maybe some terrific alternatives. I, you know, I've seen way too many times where you know in a project like this and government funding and yes, we've got to watch our dollars and cents and all of that, but we end up cutting stuff so much that would you know, disappointed down the road, and then we get beat up for, why didn't you guys look ahead and do something, <laughs> you know, whatever. So I, I guess my thought today and seeing this, and, you know, that is that kind of an overrun isn't just an you know, overrun. I mean, that's half again as much as <laughs> kind of the project budget, um, but it's probably important. So I, I guess I'm all for having the broader discussion, taking a little bit more time and... Uh, trying to get what we really want, so. So you don't really want to talk about it. Is that what you're saying, Dan? <laughs> no, I, but not, to, okay, I mean, we can I talk about it today, I but. It. Okay. <laughs> so before I uh, go down that street, one more you got and, and just so that I, in my, come back with new ideas, I know that at one point, I, I don't know where the conversation came in in my mind, but there was conversation about what would the bare bones minimum take to just paint it, shine it up, make it safe for the public, and leave it as it is. And where did that number come in? And did that conversation ever come to fruition? We did not go with that bare bones. Okay. That, so it would be about 90000 to paint it. 
and then you'd have to do some ADA stuff. So you could probably get it done for you know, hundred and a half, hundred and seventy, and just so, and just paint it again. And, and I think those are the kind of things that I, when I say come back with some options, I I, I don't know what the temperature is out there for for that that right. iconic piece. I know we love it. I know the community wants it to stay that, to to remain, and and I think we're all committed to that. But at what level? Um, so I'd like to see that. Here's the minimum, and then and then we know here's. Here's the maximum. So somewhere in between there is what we'd like to have, what I'd like to have as far as all the options that the public could could be informed of. So. And Councilman English, uh, that's exactly right. We wanted to just vet this so that it, it could be seen by everybody um, and, and talk through this because we really beat ourselves up trying to find some solutions here and really haven't had good luck because of the bidding environment. And in fact, we'd be better off if we had taken the hard bid way back when. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're, we're, we're going the wrong direction. With that, we have uh, Christy Wood and Chris Martin are here from NIC. They're our partners here, right. and they would like to give us some input. So if you guys wouldn't mind, come up and tell us your perspective. <clears throat> and while they're doing that, I, I don't believe I have a conflict of interest, but for full disclosure, I'm happy to disclose that I'm an employee of NIC, and a couple of my bosses are here, so. <laughs> <laughs> Only six more weeks. I know, right? You're almost done. You're short. Well, thank you for allowing this. It's important yeah. to us to, to share with you our perspective. And I'm, I brought with me, and I leave, I'll leave it with you to review. This is an agreement that the city signed uh, in February of last year, and it has to do with the grandstand and with the um, BLM property. I want to remind you about the agreement because NIC has contributed toward this project. We contributed $228,000 toward the BLM, which is the, the landscaping and the trail, and then $8,000 toward the destruction of the blue building, and then $150,000 toward the renovation of Memorial Grandstand. So the reason for that, and in meetings that we've had since, is to address the Title IX issues. And Title IX is not just a college and university issue, it's every government entity's issue. And so what we currently have with players at that field, particularly the NIC girls softball, is um, they don't have a restroom, they have to go across into the park to change into their field, they don't have a, the locker room that's uh, Title IX compliant. And so those things were really important to us. Also a verbal agreement that we had that I keep uh, reminding everyone, and Bill's been wonderful about it, is that NIC would like to have the NIC Cardinal somewhere on the building and we will provide the Cardinal. Um, so these things are really important. I hope you'll bring these up in your future discussion with council. One thing we do know, because we've experienced it ourselves, is that sometimes the cost of construction changes. We get that. And I would never suggest that Bill has fallen down on the job. He's been working hard constantly. We get that. But I will tell you that it's, we thought last summer we would have that BLM property done, and it, it hasn't happened. And here we are going into May, and we still don't have and it's just weeds, I just drove by. There's no movement. We wrote a check to the city for all of that last June. So um, we don't mind that you're holding on to, what is it, $334,000? But we wanna see some movement on the project. And so I, that's just a friendly reminder. But I wanna introduce Chris Martin, he can talk to you some more about our agreement. I do think uh, Chair Wood covered covered most of the high points there, but just just a reminder that we do have that agreement, and our interest is is strictly as far as Memorial Grandstands go, making sure that our softball players have adequate um, space and equipment storage. So that's that's really our our need there, and so that's just what we wanted to share today. Is when this gets delayed, it does impact um, the softball program as well, and so just to keep that in mind, and thank you for for considering this. And then I would like to suggest that your partners have been good partners with you, in fact, that we're very fond of the city. Obviously, I am. Um, and I think that you could go back to your partners, because we're one of the smaller partners in the overall project. I think you could go back to your partners and suggest that some of this be phased in. As long as there's an effort over the next two, three years in a budgeting process, you know, maybe 
I'd hate, the hot box is true, Kiki, I would hate to miss that window of Ignite money or the whole project's gone. Um, but maybe certain things could be framed in, come back to it in another year's budget, whether it's the, the restrooms. I, I would prioritize the restrooms and then the locker rooms. I have to tell you the um, concessions area, wonderful idea, and it's a revenue maker. I hope you can do it someday. But even a food truck's fine for now. And so I, I think your partners will be open to that kind of creative stretch it out over a couple of years, but get what you can done with Ignite Money done now. That That's from the Park and Rec Commissioner Christy Wood, not the board chair. <laughs> which, which Christy are we talking to now? <laughs> I have a question. So looking at the original bid, originally where we started, and your 150, your 150,000 was about 12%. Well, now your 150 is only about 9%. So is there wiggle room for us to go back to you guys and say, hey, can you help us? I mean, it's a two-way street. Yeah. You have priorities for things that aren't a priority for us, locker rooms. I mean, you guys have been playing on that field forever. And I get it. I want it to be all nice. I just, this is a lot of money. And to drain his capital parks fund, is that the right avenue? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it's not. And but that in three years, urban renewal closes, and then we can fund the whole thing, if you think of it that way. But I get it. You don't really want to wait that three or four years. Well, no, we don't. But we also, really, that BLM piece does not look nice. And that's the gateway to the city. And so we would like to get that definitely mapped out and done. Um, that suggestion's been made that the city approached the board and asked for additional funds. And you're certainly welcome to do that. I will tell you philosophically where I think the board will be. Uh, we're in flat enrollment ourselves right now. Times are good. What? Everybody's got a job, so they're not going to school. And so it, for the first time in a quite a while, we're actually looking at discussions of a tax increase to fund our own operations. We also have a capital improvement fund that is earmarked out into uh, the next decade at least. And so we're kind of in the same shoes. Um, doesn't mean that we couldn't try to plan for something down the road, just like I suggested you do. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't tell you not to ask. Chris, he's hanging on to the budget over here. <laughs> he's like Troy. Yeah. I'm he's not saying anything. Not gonna let go, not gonna okay, let go. It's okay. yeah. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. We appreciate that perspective. Yeah, I appreciate the input. So that's, I'm, I'm fine with bringing it to council, and I don't know if you pick up anything out of this. Is it to give you some well, more a options? A couple of things. Maybe um, just direction. What, what Christy spoke about, um, the, the landscaping between uh, River and Hubbard, um, it has been delayed, and part of the mix-up in, in that delay was who's actually going to run the show. Uh, it was going to be an NIC or us. And so uh, I was running on the assumption that NIC was working directly with the group that was doing the skate park area. Um, and they weren't. So I stepped in to help out. We met with some of uh, their maintenance folks last week with uh, two architects. And we've got a pretty good plan in place. One of the things that I was charged to do was make certain that the architects don't make it too architectural and that they like to color outside the lines and drive the, process, the costs up. And so it's just pretty much a green belt. Um, I was really cognizant of their maintenance needs and trying to keep it easy for them to maintain. And so um, I think we've got, uh, we're moving forward on that really well right now. And hopefully the bidding environment is okay later this summer for some landscaping. A good example that we did better on um, the bid that we got for doing the installation of the irrigation work that's going on right now at the skate park was about a third as it was a year ago. And I don't know, we had done some more grading in there and, and that was part of that, I think. But anyway, the number came in better. And so we are moving forward on that. Christy brings up another good point that I was thinking about today. Uh, one of the larger elements in this is really a building, a box in a building. If you look at the way the grandstand is shaped as a wedge, and inside that wedge, we've stuffed in a rectangular box and created locker rooms, restrooms, and a concession area. We've already pulled, really pretty much gutted the concession area 
uh, already because of cost. So we've taken out all the venting and the heavy electric and all that stuff in there. It's all been piped for it, but it was just going to be a vacant room. So I started thinking, what if we don't put in those elements? We just revamp the grandstands, get new siding on it, get it painted, reclad the, the seating, and then come back to it at a later date with all those things that are in there. We've already got power to it. We already, when we did the, the uh, realignment of Mullen, that plaza area, we stubbed in pipe with the anticipation that something was going to take place in the grandstand. So the water's there, the sewer's there. So all the elements are there. It's like we just have to put a box inside a box. So it's something that we could do at a later date, possibly. And in fact, I reached out to the architects today and asked if this is doable. Like if, if we start taking those pieces out, will it bring us back on budget? And I have yet to hear. At the, I, I checked my email just before I, I got here and haven't heard, but they said it looks like it's possible, mm -hmm. but they haven't really put pen to paper. And that sort of sounds like what we're all talking about right. in a phasing piece where we could do the BLM piece possibly and get that done, you know, do well, the, the BLM cosmetics. piece, those monies are really kind of separate um, in that we, we've got, we're rolling on that. And, and, and so that 150 that we're working with for this project is, is there. And so that, they, they just gave us a chunk of change for a couple different things. Like right. The, the blue building, you know, being torn down, the right. demo, the, the landscape piece, and now the grandstands. And then the phasing, if you can get with the architect to say we can do the cosmetics of the outside, right. then, then wait until we yeah, can Yeah, there's some it. shoring up, and it might be, you know, there was some fire stuff that we were supposed to put in because we were having a, a, a occupied building. That goes away. The extra venting, ductwork because of the restrooms, that goes away. All of the, the rough carpentry in that box for the, the inside piece, the, the ticket booth, the, rest, the two restrooms, there was a, another storage building, and also the dugout, you could access it from the home team's dugout. So that ran some costs up. Now I asked them to put the uh, dugout on the outside without access into the building. That's going to save some money there, too. So uh, hopefully here in the next day or two, I can get some better numbers, and maybe by council time we'll have something that's a better package than what this is. So that sounds like... The way to go is is wait for that to come together and then bring the full thing back. But again, you know, we are we are up against that that July one deadline, and so we don't have a lot of time. So the, the, when we come back with some better numbers, uh, we're gonna have to make a decision about what we really want to do. Has it, sorry, go has Ignite shared whether it's possible if the project were um, designed in phases? If it were started by July 1, does it secure the funding for each of the phases as projected? I think they're obligated to the phase one because the, in my mind, I'm not an attorney, but it seems to me that if they're going to break ground again in phase two in 18 months from now, the clause that's happening now or the bill has been passed in Boise about July 1, it would, it would, you couldn't do it. Well, maybe that's something that should be clarified before it comes to council because it's, it, it could be if it's one contract with three phases that initializes before the um, deadline that it could be, I, I, like, we're yeah. not the attorneys, but I think Mrs. Quaid could okay. answer that. Dan? Well, a couple of thoughts. The, <clears throat> you know, when you say oh, take out the venting and all of that in the restroom, I, I guess you know, we might have different definitions of what the bare minimum, like I'm thinking, and after hearing now, I mean, to me, the bare minimum includes the um, the bathroom, the locker room, you know, the sprucing it up, but, you know, not the concession, maybe some other stuff, but, but I think that needs to, for my bare minimum, the other thing is, I guess, um, I would be very, I would be very cautious about, and I'm also on the Ignite boards. I'm going to be dealing with about th this way about three different ways, but uh, would be very cautious about giving even the appearance that you know you're trying that anybody would be trying to like kind of rush something through, take shortcuts to. In, in essence, kind of a, avoid the intent of a new law that is out there and all of that. We may not like it or whatever, but I think we have to, we just have to be mindful that we don't want to look like we're trying to go around corners. And um, so anyway, this, it's going to be a So, a so you're, you're so. thinking the way I was too, because I never thought about 
the bare bones, the, the, such the bare bones that it was actually removal of those restrooms until today about noon. It, ne it never occurred to me because it was like I was so entrenched in that thought process that I, I didn't think there was any option. Then I started thinking, well, wait a second. It's been like this for a while. NIC has been using it like this for the last 22 years that I've been working here uh, like this. I know they would prefer to have it that way, but maybe there's a way we could do it, as Christy talked about, phased. Um, so there's, there's nothing under there right now, Councilman, except rafters. I mean, there's a, there's a little area that was a concession stand that, that was not up to code, but it's just bare bones underneath it. So there's never been, well, I shouldn't say never been, there was locker rooms in there a long time ago. Um, but right now, there has been nothing but a seating area. But we have created a certain amount of public expectation, you know, of what, right. what we're doing with this whole thing and the whole, you know, Four Corners project right. and, I mean, part of the whole thing. And, right. and then it's like, you know, oh, now we're getting down to the end and we're going to have to cut off some. So, so the bare bones that I came up with today was that that whole building would be refurbished because I, I dealt with this with, with the committee. I talked to them before. They kept saying, well, let's cut this and let's cut that. And I said, well, if we cut this. It's like we're spending still a lot of money, and at the end of the day, is everybody going to be satisfied with that product? I don't think so. And one of the things we talked about was there's a cladding that goes over all the benches, and it gets a surface material on it, and it really seals it up and makes it really nice. Well, if we just paint it, they're going to say, you spent how much on what? You know, you're not getting much bang for your buck. And so that was one element that I thought needed to stay. But then the, this other piece about the building inside the building, it, 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 it Bears, you know, looking at, I think. There's a couple of thoughts from a different perspective. So if you were just to, if we were just to pull the trigger and go, okay, give us the 453 out of your capital right. fund, where does that leave you guys for this year on capital? When you say parks you guys, guy. you mean parks guys? Parks guy, your money. Broke. Mm -hmm. Does it clean you out? Mm-hmm. Now, there, there's some, some obligations we have in this already, that this, this number you see. We, we've got a couple of bills to pay, but, but nonetheless, it would li liquidate us. And now, of course, we're going to be getting revenues uh, that come in yearly, and so it'll start to build back up again. So we get a piece of the parking fund, and we get some more of our, lock, our, our, D, our leases from our docks, and so we, we are vendors. So we get some revenue rolling in that direction, and we just take some time to build it back up. So that 450 right now is not a year's worth of. No, it's, it's not been, a year by any means. No, no, no. It's been building. Okay. And and we've been using some of it. I mean, we use some for the skate park, and right. you know, we, we threw some at this project, and so we threw 200k at the Mullen realignment project. Gotcha. So we we use it as we go along and have have the need. So here's an interesting thought. You know, the four corners. Uh, Dan mentioned that, and I'm thinking back when this architect came with this cool idea to fix the grandstands. Came out of the blue. I don't remember it being in a budget. It was never, it just kind of, this is a cool idea. This will kind of finish up. It's our history and all that. Was that, was it a long-term project or is it just something that felt good, it came along and it was cool and? I think it was identified that needed some work in the, our master plan. Right. And so when we did the alignment of Mullen and renamed it and then did the plaza, it occurred to us we got all this really cool stuff. Right. And we got this old building that looks like it's about ready to fall down. We should probably do something because we're sprucing everything up all the way to river. And now here by the end of the summer we'll have river to Hubbard landscape. So we have this nice corridor that's, that's well done and we've got a, an older building that needs help. And so that's, I, I believe, what, what prompted the thinking on it. Okay. It just seems like we've, the Four Corners has been worked and reworked and different ideas over the years, and now it's finally things are up. We're just about done with it now. Yeah, you it's Because you, you, you all go back far enough when, it, yeah, it's been looked at a lot. Right. You know, we have some old Four Corners concepts that were 20-plus years old. Okay. Any other questions, thoughts? It'll be a good discussion. So. I'm thinking we just should kick it. What do you think? Yep. Gear I think there's up. a lot of options. I think we yeah. have a lot of discussion, a lot of different things we talk about. And, and, you know, and, and getting your partners involved is a great idea to yeah. discuss phases and what's really important. And could locker rooms without a restroom suffice if it was inexpensive? I mean, just uh, there's a lot of options with that box idea and the phasing. So 
And you know, I, for me, I looked at it and went, I, I understand billing costs have gone up and timing and all of that, but sometimes when you know you plan something and then you say, that, well, this is what I want, and the cost change, you just don't always get it. So <laughs> you right. sometimes have to go back to, well, I'm gonna have to pare right. down what I want. So I, I think that's where it, it's at for me. So. Yeah. So I, I want to ask you guys for Bill is, do you want him to try and uh, get some different priorities to bring to council? Because it could be a cluster real easy if everybody's I, throwing in different ideas. I, I don't know if you can walk I, away I, with I will, I will try and get some of this other creative bare bones stuff. Um, here and in the, the next phasing few days. and input from the partners and if the, and that if those come together as options to say these are the options that we've gone through, even going back to NIC, can they? You know, as as Christy said, she doesn't say don't ask. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't. But the full percentage of the increase is on the city side in the last year. So maybe there's a way to share a small piece of that. Maybe a way to compromise on some of the amenities. But I think coming back with options that have been kind of vetted out before we just have an open right. discussion is what this discussion makes sense. Yeah, I guess the only other input that I would have is because of the kind of the unknown quantity with the new code is I would suggest our legal people get together if the, you know with the Ignite legal folks and just really look at you know what does that new law really mean and say and what potential impact because if we're going to make some decisions potentially about that we need to really know what we're talking about. So. And it's like you said, that's it, the maybe legal. it is time to bring it to the public. You know, yeah. I don't know, but maybe that's. So, really so sir, are you talking about the, the July 1 yeah. deadline? Yeah. Um, yeah. I've and been what told can be included? I know that there's some cost exemption. Just, it seems like we need more definition on that, and maybe somebody already has it, but I don't. And I'm guessing for the council meeting, we're going to want to have a clear, uh, and that's kind of outside your. Scheme right, and I, I talk with, with our legal counsel, uh, Mr. Adams, and he read right from it what it is. So we'll certainly include that in your packet so you can yep. see it really in black and white because he read it to me, and it, it's pretty darn clear. Great. Randy, do you want to share anything right now, or is he on target for you? Or? I, I think he okay. is on target. I think the, the amended, oh, <laughs> amended statute talks about the expend, expenditure of money, not. so I'm not sure that it would work for you to phase it in because it's it, the July 1 talks about when is the money spent. So it has to be spent before July, July 1. 1. And I think the uh, to answer uh, Council Member English's comment earlier, uh, he talked about the July 1 and, and we don't want to sneak around. Well, the original bill was supposed to go into effect right away in January. They did push it out to July 1 and I think it was specifically to allow some projects that were in yeah, underway to get funded before the change in the lock occurred. Thanks. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate that. We'll put that on the agenda, please. Christy, thank you for being here, you guys. We appreciate that perspective. We would have never heard that, never even thought about it, other than I want some more money. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. So look for a move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.